So let's talk about how you can make things like this, shirts using screen printing. And specifically, we're gonna talk about a new method you can use to do it, and that is by using a laser. Now, obviously, screen printing has been around for a super long time, and there's a lot of really great tutorials online, but typically the screen creation process, so the process it takes to make one of these, and this process is usually pretty involved. But by using a laser, you can actually shortcut a lot of that. And Xtool is now providing a standalone screen printing unit actually lets you create prints on shirts or paper or all kinds of stuff you can put ink on. Now, before we get into this equipment specifically, let's talk about the normal screen printing process. So first, you're going to find some type of design and you're gonna use that design to create a screen that you can then print. Now, typically, you're gonna be able to either make your own like wooden frame and then you're gonna stretch this metal screen across the frame. And a lot of times you can actually buy these frames with the screens already attached but you're gonna put this emulsion on it, which is like this blue substance that you can see on this screen right here. This is light reactive, and that is how you actually get your image on the screen. Because with the normal process, once you've got your image, you're gonna print it out, then you're gonna use light to basically transfer that image to the screen. And in general, with screen printing, you're gonna be using one screen for one color. And a lot of times, the process of creating this is one of the hardest parts about screen printing. But that is where Xtool has come in to help with that overall process by using one of their machines. Now, they kind of package this stand with the Xtool S1. It's their desktop diode laser solution. Um, but you can also use their P2, which is a CO2 laser, so more powerful laser. I just don't have it inside of the studio. You can also use the Xtool M1 Ultra right behind me, and I believe also the Xtool F1. Because all you're really doing is just removing this emulsion from the wire mesh. So you're just gonna do like a normal laser engrave that you might do on wood um, or paper or any other type of material. You're just gonna be blasting away the blue emulsion underneath. And right here you can see a zoomed in image I used in my video microscope of, and you can actually see the mesh and then that blue emulsion in between the mesh. And as we're kind of scanning over, you're seeing the areas um, where that emulsion has gone away and that is what the laser is removing. Now actually with the one that I'm scanning right now I think I had the laser turned up a little bit too high so the edges are looking a little bit jagged uh, because I was blasting away too much material but Exo does a really good job of providing you some settings to use as well. So you can buy this a couple different ways. Um, you can get a single screen which is really a single frame and they give you three screens that you can use with the frame or they give you a multicolor kit uh, that is four frames with like 12 screens um, and then you can buy more screens as needed. And I've also seen people online actually remove the emulsion from the screens and like re-put it on themselves. So they are reusable, but that's just a little bit longer. Now let's talk a little bit more about the frame itself because this is actually a pretty easy process to put these together. So you've got some levers on three sides of this and this helps to pull the screen in tight. So that is how you're going to tighten your screen. And then you've got a few rods that actually sit down in here and kind of lock the screen into place. And then at that point, then you can lock it down. Um, but you can see right here, I'm putting a brand new screen in one of these frames and getting it fully tight and ready to go. Doesn't take much time whatsoever. Really the only annoying part with it that I found, um, they come with a cardboard back. I think just to keep it safe and stiff while shipping. For whatever reason, it might just be because it's so blazing hot right now, the glue is seeming to stick on that cardboard. So I had to remove that separate. I was able to give it off, but it was a little bit extra. So let's talk about this stand itself. So you have your plastic which is where you're gonna put your paper or your shirt, uh, whatever you're gonna print on. And they provide one of these sticky mat, pretty similar to what you might find with a Cricut. If you're doing vinyl cutting, they're basically the exact same type as you get with the X-Tool M1. They're just sized to fit with this unit specifically. Then you have the ability to have some fine adjustments, uh, which is really handy, especially when you're doing like multicolor prints. So right here, you can move up and down and then left and right. So it's really nice to use that when you're lining up between screens and between prints to make sure your artwork is where you want it to be. But really kind of the main section of this is this right here, which is where you're going to attach your screen. And the process to put on a new screen doesn't take long whatsoever. Um, it just slides in right here. And then you have these quick release latches that will latch it into place. Um, and then you can push this up and down. It's actually spring loaded. And, and there is a knob right here that will let you lock this into place. So at this point, you can put in your ink, you can pull your squeegee, and you can do your print and this is hinged so that you can drop this all the way down when you're ready to go and then pull this 
across. Because you also get a few other things to make that happen. A big one being you do get a set of ink. This like changes depending on the kits that you get, uh, but you can pretty much use any type of screen printing ink with this. Um, so it doesn't have to be X tool specific, uh, but they provide you some to get you started. And then they also give you a squeegee with this like squeegee rubbery thing on the bottom that you're gonna use to actually pull the ink across your screen to get everything going through. And they give you like a little knife to also get the ink out and drop it on your screen. So overall, it's a pretty simple kit. I do like the entire construction is metal um, because you don't want this moving around um, because you will be pushing down pretty hard and pulling. Um, so it's nice having this being pretty stable. I also like that this will lock into kind of any position that you want, um, not just like in height, but like how it hinges. Now bigger like professional units, you'll see screens like these, like in a big circle. So they might have four or five of them at a time. Um, you're not gonna get that with this, um, but Again, it does not take long whatsoever um, just to take this out and drop a new one in there. And if you get the multi-screen kit, it does not take long to grab a new one, lock it in, and you're going to be good to go. All right, we're gonna go through a full walkthrough of taking a design, sending it to the laser, and then doing a screen. But before we do that, I wanna show you some examples of things that I've done so far, uh, as well as some things I've done wrong, to hopefully save you some of the mistakes that I've made and some tips I've picked up along the way. All right, so the first one has to do with this, which is like my very first print I tried to do of the Haunted Mansion. Um, and as comparison, like this is really what it's supposed to look like. So this had a lot of bleeding in terms of like ink over the design. And what I found was happening is I would go and put my ink in, then I would flood it, meaning I would take the ink across the design so it's ready to go. But when I actually went to take the squeegee across, I was doing it like multiple times, thinking like the more that I do it, the more detail I'm gonna get. And what actually wound up happening is the ink started to come through the screen and then wrap underneath, where then when I would do like an additional pull, the ink that had bled through underneath was coming in. So from my super limited testing, um, as well as like research of some actual pro screen printing channels. Most of them will say like, once you kind of flood your artwork, typically you're only gonna do like one pull or one push so that you get a nice clean result at the end. Now, speaking of the squeegee, uh, the next tip has to do with the size of this in comparison to your artwork. The one that they provide is eight inches. Uh, and I wanna say that the screen itself is like 11 and a half, but obviously the squeegee has to fit inside of your print, but your artwork needs to fit inside the width of your squeegee because coming back to the fact that you only want to do one pull across, if you have it too small, you're gonna have to do multiple. And even if you didn't have the ink like bleeding through. Pressure may not be exactly the same, so you're not gonna get the best result. So I wound up resizing my artwork to like seven and a half inches or maybe seven inches compared to the eight inches on the squeegee. All right, tip number three has to do with this guy, the gnome, the moon uh, that I did in reverse. As you'll see here in a second, when we actually engrave these screens, this is going to sit upside down inside of the laser. So you need to reverse your image inside of the software before you do it. Uh, the multicolor side of it actually worked really well, but just remember that you need to reverse your image when you're dropping it in. And speaking of those multicolor images, you're gonna be working pretty quick, especially with this like water-based paint because it can dry fairly quickly. And when your screen has a good number of details, I actually was finding that my ink would dry between uh, the different prints that I was doing. So I was losing that detail as I was going. But you actually do want that ink to dry on your print when you're doing multiple prints because when I went from black to red, I don't want like the black coming back into my red screen. So to control how much drying is happening, um, I've just been using a heat gun. Uh, bigger like pro solutions will actually have like a big heating plate that you can put your print right underneath for a few seconds that will dry it. But if you don't have any of those, you still can use time uh, for drying or like set this outside in the sun and it'll dry pretty quick. Here is the exact same print, but this brings us to the next tip that will keep you from making mistakes like this where I completely forgot about how big my material actually was. So basically with this, I sized it uh, to the initial screen, um, which did not have any of this red at the bottom. So I was just looking at the black and I was like, oh yeah, this would fit. But then when I went to do the red screen, 
Wow, that was nowhere close. It did not, so I actually printed onto this mat down here. But one way to get around that, as well as help you with alignment, is I've seen a lot of people use like basically like little circles and dots in the four corners. Um, and these are gonna be like reference markers or ways that you can line up the screen on your material, but then also line up the screens to themselves. So the circle crosshairs are something that would be printed onto the actual screen. And then you can use those crosshairs to help line you up on your material. But using those crosshairs leads me to another tip, is the fact you don't wanna actually print those crosshairs. So you can mask those out. This applies to anything you don't wanna print with the color you're about to do. So you can put tape on it, but I see most people recommend putting that tape on the underside. So it's still gonna block the ink from coming through. But as you're pulling or pushing your squeegee across, you're not gonna like hit the tape and then potentially pull that tape up. And then tape is going to be our next tip. So not only can you use it to mask, this is something that I did when I remembered to do it, is you would put a one inch tape I probably don't have to use this because it's like more expensive, uh, but you put it around the edges of your screen in your frame because this is gonna make cleanup a lot easier. That's probably like the only drawback of screen printing in general is the fact that you just got to clean your screen after like every time you're done printing. But by having those edges masked off, that helps keep the paint from getting into the edges and like drying and sticking everything into place. So go around the edges with like one inch tape is going to be a great way to keep the cleanup quick at the end. All right, let's go through the full process so you guys can see kind of how this works. We've got the Xtool S1 specifically. This is the 40 watt version. Uh, I am connected over Wi-Fi and we are inside of Xtool Creative Space. This is like 2.0, so it might look a little bit different. And I actually already have my screen inside, but I wanna take it out so you guys can see how this works. So these notches right here are the same ones that go into these like quick release latches. You also will get a bracket that you can screw into, specifically the Xtool S1, that's gonna give you a couple of pins and those pins will line up exactly with the screen. So the screens always wind up in the exact same position. So we put that screen in and it is upside down. So the screen surface is going to be closer to the laser head. It's indexed all the way over into those pins because when we jump over into the software, specifically the mode that we are gonna process this with, we're gonna switch this over to screen preparation. And when we do that, you can see we are getting a green crosshair. That green crosshair is the exact center of the screen. And then you're also getting a green outline, which is the outline of the screen itself. Now we're gonna go ahead and find the height of the material on this guy. So we're gonna measure that distance real quick. All right, and then I'm going to import my artwork. And this artwork has to be an SVG file, but there also are ways inside of Xtool Creative Space that allow you to convert it to a vector. I actually have a full video on a bunch of different tips, including that one, if you guys wanna check it out, right up there. But you guys can see we have this Marvel print right here that I'm actually making for my son. All right, first up, we need to flip it and reverse it. Uh, so we are going to be good to go. So we have that mirror image uh, and then the screen is at a 90 degree angle. So I'm going to pull this down at 90 degrees. Now, one thing that I have found really helpful, especially for doing shirts, is when you put your shirt on, basically you're gonna put like the bottom of the shirt inside the platen and like pull it over, meaning that the neck is going to be at the top. So the bottom of your artwork needs to be where the bottom pins are, meaning that the bottom of the artwork needs to be on this side of the laser, uh, which is actually reverse of what I have right here. So I'm gonna flip this around so that I have my pins right here and the bottom is right there, uh, we will be good to go. All right, and the last thing that we have to do is double check the size. So right now it's actually at seven and a half inches. That's great. And then I'm just going to center this to the screen um, where I'm just taking like that middle dot and just putting it pretty much right in the middle of that green crosshair. At this point, I have everything set up. And so all I need are my settings to go with my material. And I'm actually give you settings for this screen specifically. This is the two millimeter coated screen. Uh, you can get to that here right at the top. Uh, and then when you do that, and then I click on my artwork, you're gonna see that we're gonna have a reference. And that reference uh, is gonna be 41 and then 258 on the speed. Cool. At this point, um, we could frame if we wanted to. Actually, we'll go ahead and do that. 
All right, then we're gonna go into process. It's gonna give us a preview, which will also give us the time. It's going to be a little less than an hour and a half. So these do take a while. If you're using the Xtool P2, you could run it faster than this one. But the great part about the screens versus when you just straight laser engrave something directly onto material, that's like a one-time deal. And then to make the prints, it's like just a few seconds. All right, here is my freshly engraved screen. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this on the stands. And then I'm just gonna be printing onto like a piece of cardboard uh, just to make it easy for demo. And then we are just gonna do this in red that I've got right here. And then I'm going to drop uh, my ink on. I've got the screen raised up a little bit, so I'm not actually going onto the cardboard. I'm gonna flood the ink across. I'm gonna push it down. Then I'm going to pull this across one time and then pull this up, and you can see we've got a nice little screen print. Now this is a really cool beginner solution that's gonna give you some really nice results all using a laser. Now making a screen is not the only thing a laser can do. Specifically the Xtool S1 is a really nice machine. We're actually gonna jump into my full review of this machine right now so you can see if this is something that you might want to check out. All right, until next time, go make or break something in your shop. See you guys.